right, my friends, we are back with my friend, Michael McLean, one of my black belts here and one of the awesome instructors here at Gracie, Ohio, and he just launched his own YouTube channel. You can check it out um, to the fake death BJJ. Is that what it is? That's it. All right, we'll put a link in there so you can check out. Uh, he's got some awesome techniques. Anyway, he's going to share with us uh, one of his go-to uh, techniques, um, and uh, it, it, it sucks pretty bad, actually. But uh, Good to hear. it's it, in a great way, right? Um, yes. He's going to share with us some some variations that he does from the Darce choke, which is a high you know high percentage choke. Uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Boom. Well, cool. So before we get into the Darce choke, I'll explain a little bit about uh, exactly what's happening in the Darce, and I think that that led me to really understand how to apply the choke because it's a technique I kind of threw out as a blue belt. I was like, uh, I don't think this one's for me. And I was just kind of getting a couple things wrong and then some people shared some things with me in time and I'm like, oh wow, and then it clicked. It became like a really good choke for me. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about like a, an easy entry into it and then how I'm placing my wrist and my chest pressure and what's actually strangling my opponent. And then we'll get into uh, some cool functionality of how to address their defense. All right, so let's have you down. Well, first thing, maybe uh, off of a guard pass or even if I have side control and they all of our, you know, if they're smart, they're gonna keep tight with this arm as they bump into me. But a lot of people make space with their elbow here between the, the ribs and the elbow. And that's what I'm banking on. So maybe if I have Robin here in good side control and I let him up a little bit, he busts, boom, right here. So now my arm feeds in through and around here and I grab his head. Now once I grab his head, I make a nice good meat hook with my hand and I pull everything tight. Now as I pull tight, I take a big bite with my chest, right? Here to pull tight. So just even with this grip and my chest pressure, it's hard for Robin to get back to the mat or get out of this. Now, as soon as I get into this position, my elbow meets the back of his head. I'm pulling with this, this hand here on his head. I wanna make the same pressure with my elbow. So I pull the elbow in and now I can flip my thumb up and grab my bicep. So here, put my thumb up, grab my bicep. Now this hand reaches to the lat. I'm not doing much with this hand other than just resting it and connecting it to Robin's back. Now everything, everything tight. The simple way to apply the choke from the very start is to get nice and tight and I sprawl my hips straight down and I insinuate my chest pressure straight down and squeeze everything in. Now, what's actually happening here is the blade of my wrist is in the bottom underside of his neck. All right, so I want to make sure I find the artery here. Sometimes in the dart stroke, we're too deep, and we wrap around the back muscles of the neck, which he can feel. It's unpleasant, but not choky, and I can feel it too. It's definitely not his artery. Or I'm too shallow around towards his throat. Same concept. It's a little bit too hard, not as soft as the artery is. So you can find and talk to your partner when you're drilling, hey, is that your artery? He's like, yeah, that's my artery. Or he's like, oh, that's the back of my neck. <laughs> so once I get there nice and tight, I pull tight, right? And then I replace my elbow and grab my, and that should put the orientation of my wrist in the right place in the bottom. So that's the first function, it's going up, right? And so when I make my squeeze, I'm squeezing, but I'm kind of like chalking my, my elbow up to try to bring almost like a reverse paper, paper cutter motion, bringing my wrist up into the neck like this. And then I'm squeezing everything in and chalking. The second application of pressure is my chest on top of his arm. I need Robin's arm on his neck. It can't be on his face and it can't be on his ribs. It has to be on his neck. All right, and we'll talk about how to address it if he pulls his elbow to his ribs. So my chest pressure by sprawling my hips goes straight down here. So I got one pressure going straight down into this artery over his shoulder, the other pressure coming straight up with that shuck of the shoulder going straight up. So both arteries shut off. So I slide in, boom, boom. Start sprawling my hips for the choke. Now, if he pulls his left elbow or his, uh, his left elbow to his ribs to defend his shoulder away from his neck, right, to stop that top pressure coming down on my chest, I can switch my hips and use my body to pull his elbow back aligned to his neck. So when I go in, I go in, I make my choke structure, and he's smart, and he draws his elbow. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my hips and use my body to drag, literally drag his arm back to his neck. Now the, the squeeze is just a slightly different squeeze now. I sit, I pull everything in tight. Now I really hunker down and I'm gonna really focus on that shuck upward motion of my shoulder for the choke, okay? Now, we're gonna get fancy here. Um, I like getting fancy because jiu-jitsu should be fun. 
the first two are the, the best ways, right? This is the most, uh, I guess, the, the most direct path to get the choke in the tap. Now, certain people get good at defending. They know that if they draw their elbows to their ribs, they're defending their neck, right? But the other thing they can do is get their back to the mat. Even though it's uncomfortable, it actually, they'll find success of escaping. So what I mean by that is I get here, I get nice and choky, and Robin gets his back to the mat. Oh, what? oh no, the dark structure, oh no. I can't kill Robin. <laughs> I don't want to do that, I want to make sure I have success here. So what I'm gonna to look to do is as soon as I get everything tight, I'm of course gonna to try to keep him from getting his back to the mat. But I'm using my right leg, I'm gonna hook this leg, and I'm gonna go with where he wants to go. He wants to get his back to the mat, well, I'm gonna beat him there, and we're gonna do a forward roll. And he's gonna land on top of me. All right, and there's gonna be certain things I can do and then squeeze this the same way as we finished before. So let's scoot over here a little bit. So I shoot into the dars. Everything's nice and tight. Now, before he starts to roll, right, I don't need the leg, but I like to set it up this way. So what I'll do is I'll look to grab his leg here in the crook. And then my right heel goes to the ceiling. And now I'm gonna tuck my head and forward roll over my right shoulder to land here. Now I'm in the same structure, he's bunched up, and he can't get out, can't get on top of me, and now I'm gonna squeeze everything into my chest for the choke. And the same thing can occur without the leg. If I don't have the leg and say I can't hook it on the way over, I'm just gonna go with him. He goes over, I go with him. As soon as my feet hit the mat, I stop him and I put my hips up. And now I squeeze everything into his arm. Boom. Gnarly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you, you're having difficulty finishing the, the Darce choke or if it's a choke that you like or even haven't even played around with yet, try those out. Uh, let us know what you think. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Go give him a, a, you know, a like on his uh, channel. And it's coming soon. Learn some more awesome uh, details. So we'll see you all soon.